I can't think of any liquid that a formulating chemist might encounter that has a higher surface tension than water. So how do we deal with that? With surfactants. That's how. Let's roll the intro. So the challenge is to develop water-based products that address wetting, coverage, flow and leveling, foam control, pigment dispersion, and emulsion stability. How do we do it? So here are some of the topics that will be covered in our course on surfactants. Because of surface tension and without the force of gravity, water takes on a spherical form. Why is that? One way to measure surface tension is through contact angles. The higher the surface tension, the higher the contact angle. Surface tension occurs in the first place due to a downward compressive force on the surface. Intermolecular attractive forces, such as dipole-dipole interaction, is one of the key reasons water behaves the way it does. We'll review all types of surfactant structures from alkyl phenolethoxalates to acetylenic diols. We'll also explain the formation of micelles once the interface is completely saturated with surfactant molecules. Then we'll examine foam formation and stabilization as a result of surface transport of surfactant molecules at the foam bubble wall, the lamella. Once we understand how surface foam or macro foam is created, we'll describe how they can be disrupted. Then we'll address air entrainment or micro foam. What causes them? What diminishes them? Besides intermolecular forces, we'll examine interatomic forces, including electronegativity, to appreciate how dipole-dipole attraction between water molecules is formed in the first place. We'll also review the pigment dispersion process, including wetting, separation, and stabilization. And we'll explain the various types of dispersants that aid in the dispersion process, from monomeric to polymeric structures. All this and more with our course on surfactants.